Betsy McCoy with us, the foremost authority on Obamacare. She has some disturbing Obamacare headlines for us. Number one, Betsy, by the way, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we were talking during the break, and you say that these late, this latest delay, new rules, new regulations, they're going to make it a crime to tell the truth? Absolutely. No. Here they are, issued by the U.S. Treasury on Monday, and on page 125, it says that for employers to be eligible for this delay in the employer mandate, employers with 50 yeah. to 99 full-time workers, they have to sign a statement filed with the IRS, so it's under penalty of perjury, that there are changes to their workforce, hours cut, l labor force numbers changed, are not the result of Obamacare. So, really? in fact, really, re he, Wait, Here wait, it is. Wait, 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 I, I want to interpret this. I, look, I'm a mid-size employer. I've got yes. 70 employees, for example, and I have actually cut the number of full-time employees over the past year because of Obamacare. That's right. But I can't say that. No, I you can't. Can, get the but delay. you have to swear that those cuts were not because of Obamacare. Were not. And that invites Big Brother in to examine your books. What was this business decision you made? W were you justified in reducing your so number of employees? If, if I really did cut the number of employees because of Obamacare, I can't say it. You can't in say fact, it. And I've got to lie. You have to lie. This forces you to lie, and here's why. Because in 2013, we saw during the first seven months, 77% of hires were part-time. And there were stories in the newspapers and on television almost every day about employers, private sector, municipalities, community colleges, reducing their workforce, putting people on part-time to avoid the coming employer mandate. Democrats are terrified it's going to happen during the second part of this year in anticipation of 2015. Yeah. And that was the impetus for delay. Yeah, I mean, well, we saw with Darden, which was interesting because Clarence Otis, I think, is a CEO, is a friend of President Obama. They were like, you know, Olive Garden, uh, right. you know, they were one of the first ones to come out and say, we're going to have to do this. And they were thrilled. Papa John's, you know, I mean, first of all, they made it a public relations disaster. Then they said, maybe we'll boycott these establishments. But now you're saying, let's make it criminal. I mean, so this is tough. And this is only one of the lies in here. Let me tell you about another one on page 37. Okay. It says, we know employers are very disturbed about the change in the definition of full-time from 40 hours to 30 hours, but we can't change it because the statute specifies 30 hours. It's the only thing in the statute they're not willing to change by fiat. <laughs> okay, I got one last one. What we, at the top of the show, we said, you're going to predict that 25 million people lose their plans this year. Well, now it's hard to say. I made that prediction before Monday's, Monday's uh, change in regulations. They're trying to do this to avoid so many employers pushing their employees out of the right. on the job coverage and into the exchanges but the problem is we don't know how many insurers are going to be able to rewrite those old group plans you see so it, might it may be too million. late it, it still have... may be 25 million we know that those who currently don't have insurance will be rushing to the exchanges because the individual mandate is in existence so 1.9 million but the 25 million still may hold true i've been trying to reach the insurance companies to say now that they've changed the rules on us again how many of you are going to be able to write those small group plans fascinating betsy uh that's extraordinary stuff thank you very much indeed for joining us come again real soon okay all right